In today's video, I'm going to present an overview of Boyle's Law. And then in the second half of the video, we'll go over some simple equations using Boyle's Law and the Boyle's Law equation. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Please support our channel, Step-by-Step -Step Science. Please subscribe. And in addition to that, we have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. And let's get started with Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law is one of the gas laws. The gas laws are used to show the relationship between the volume, the pressure, the temperature, and the amount, or the number of moles of a gas. Now, for Boyle's Law, we're going to change the volume and the pressure. And you're going to see the relationship between the volume and the pressure. That's what Boyle's Law tells us. And for Boyle's Law, we're going to keep the temperature and the amount of gas the same. Now, Boyle's Law was originally published in 1662 by Robert Boyle. And Boyle's Law says that for a fixed amount of gas that is kept at a fixed temperature. So we have a fixed amount and a fixed temperature. The pressure on the gas is inversely proportional to the volume. That means when we decrease the volume, the pressure is going to go up. When we increase the volume, then the pressure is going to go down. And I'm going to show you that in this simulation from PHET Interactive Simulations. Of course, the link to their website is also in the description below. And you can see we have a container here. We have a pressure gauge. We have a temperature gauge. And we can add the gas here, or we can actually add the particles over here. And I'm going to add about 200 of each. It doesn't really matter how much you add, but 200 works well. And then I'm going to show the width. So you can see the width down here is 5 nanometers. And because we're talking about Boyle's Law, we're going to keep the temperature constant. So we're going to hold the temperature constant. So when we keep the temperature constant, we're going to keep it at 300 degrees Kelvin. This is the pressure measured in atmospheres. This is going to be our volume measurement. Now, we don't know the height and we don't know the depth, but if we increase the length of the container, then we'll be increasing the volume. All right, so let's get started. You can see with this volume, 5 nanometers, that the pressure is here at 93 93 and a half atmospheres. Now I can grab this handle over here and I can make the container bigger. Let's set it around eight. And you can see the pressure goes down to 58 atmospheres. Then we can make it bigger again. So we're increasing the volume and you can see when we increase the volume, the pressure decreases. There's an inverse relationship. We increase one and the other one goes down. Now we can make it all the way out here to 15. That's as big as it'll get. And you can see now the pressure's gone down to about 30 atmospheres. So when we increase the volume, the pressure decreases. Now you can also see they have a nice collision counter. And really pressure is just a measure of the number of collisions that those particles have with the wall of the container. Now I'm going to set this to 5 picoseconds. Now when it runs, it's going to be longer than 5 picoseconds. But they're actually measuring the number of collisions that there would be in 5 picoseconds, which is a fraction of a second. Okay, so I'm going to run this, and you can see that in that time, with that volume, you get 244 collisions. Now, when I decrease the volume, I increase the pressure, and you can also see that by the number of collisions, because you can see the number of collisions is much higher. In this case, it's close to 600. So the pressure, the change in the pressure, you can see by the pressure, pressure gauge, of course, but you can also see that with the number of collisions that those particles have with the walls of the container. Okay, so that simulation shows really nicely the relationship between volume and pressure, and that's an inverse relationship. Now I'm going to go back to the presentation, and you can see in the presentation, I earlier made some measurements in the simulation from changing the volume from 5 up to 15. And you can see here's the pressure measurements that I made in atmospheres. And you can see very nicely here that as the volume increases, the pressure decreases. As the volume increases, the pressure decreases. This is a graph of, the boil, of that relationship, the Boyle's Law graph. On the y-axis here, we have the pressure in atmospheres. And on the x-axis here, we have the volume. And you can see as we increase the volume, the pressure decreases. Now, you should notice that this curve, this line, is not a straight line. The Boyle's Law graph showing the relationship between pressure and volume is a curved line, a decreasing curve like that. Okay, now another thing that Boyle noticed was if I multiply the pressure times the volume for each of those cases, 
I get a constant. So it's not exactly constant based on the measurements that, that I made, but essentially all of these measurements are right around 377 or 378. If there was not a constant, then you would see the change significantly in those values, but they're all basically the same. Now I can show you that mathematically, the relationship that the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. Here's the table we had. And I can write that like this. Pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. Or the pressure is proportional to 1 over the volume. And then, of course, I can switch these two. And I can say the volume is inversely proportional to the pressure. And because we multiplied those two together, we get a constant. We can write that P times V, the pressure times the volume, equal to a constant. Because all those constants are equal to each other, we can set any two values and use that as our Boyle's Law equation. So if I know the initial pressure and the initial volume, if I change the volume, then I can calculate what the new pressure will be. Okay, and we're going to do that in some examples right now. So here is our first example using the Boyle's Law equation. It says that a 6 liter container of gas has a pressure of 10 atmospheres. So this is the initial and the initial pressure, the initial temp uh, volume and pressure. If the volume of the container is reduced, so we're going to cut the volume of the container in half, what will the new pressure be of the gas in the container? Now, you should think a little bit. should make sense. You should be able to kind of figure this out because it's a nice round math. And you can see I wrote the numbers down first. I like to do that. And then I have my equation. I want to solve for P2, so I'm going to divide both sides by V2. When I plug the values in, I have 10 atmospheres is my initial pressure. 6 liters is my initial volume. I divide by the final volume. And you can see 60, 10 times 6 is 60 divided by 3 is 20 atmospheres. So that should make sense. Okay, that's kind of a little bit of common sense. It should make sense. If I cut the volume in half, squeeze that gas into half the volume, then the pressure is going to increase. Now, the numbers are not always going to be round numbers, of course. In this one, we have a gas that occupies a volume of 11.3 liters. And it's at a pressure of 35 millimeters of mercury. Now, millimeters of mercury is just another measure for the pressure. And we want to know what would the volume be if the pressure was increased to 29. So we're going to increase, excuse me, we're going to uh, is increase to 29 millimeters of mercury. This should actually say decrease to, to 29 millimeters of mercury. So we're going to write everything down. And we're going to use our Boyle's Law equation. And we're looking for volume 2, the final volume. We're going to solve for the final volume. Divide by the final pressure. And you get that the final volume is P1V1 divided by P2. I just plug the values in. Okay. And we have 35 millimeters of mercury times 11.3, those were our initial values. And in this case, we're going to be decreasing the pressure, okay? And you will see that therefore the volume goes up. If we have less pressure, then we're going to have more volume because those are inversely proportional to each other. Okay, for example number three, now we have a gas at 25 degrees Celsius and it occupies 3.6 liters and it's at a pressure of 1.2 atmospheres. What will the volume be if we increase the pressure to 2.5? Okay, now you'll notice here I'm going to write my values down again. And it does say here that the gas is at 25 degrees Celsius. Now, Boyle's Law says that we're going to keep the temperature constant. So we start here at 25 degrees Celsius, and we can assume that the temperature is not going to change. So it's, I don't know if that's to fool you or to trick you, but you don't need the temperature in these equations. All right, in the Boyle's Law equation, there's no temperature. So we want to solve for V2. We have P1 times V1 divided by P2. We plug the values in, and we get 1.7. So you can see we increase the pressure, and therefore the volume is going to be decreasing. All right, now here are the two kind of qualitative questions that we're going to ask you. If the pressure on a gas is decreased by one half, the volume in, of the gas will increase. Okay, we have the relationship, the volume is equal to 1 over the pressure. And if we, if we decrease 1, then the other one has to increase. And we cut it in half, then the volume is going to double. Okay, for number 5, it says here, if the volume on the gas is decreased by 1 half, 
So now we're going to decrease the volume. What's the new pressure going to be? Well, the relationship is the pressure is, is proportional to 1 over the volume. If we decrease the volume, then the pressure has to increase. If we cut the volume in half, just think again, we squeeze that gas into half the volume, then the pressure is going to increase and it's going to be double. Okay, one more example. Now this one says, when the air inside a container with a movable lid has a volume of 2.8 liters, the pressure on that gas is 725 millimeters of mercury. We want to know what must the volume of the container be to have the pressure change to 115 kilopascals. So I'm going to write everything down, and you will notice that the units are different for the pressure. This one is 725 millimeters of mercury. This is 115 kilopascals. Now, in order to use the equation, we have to have the units be the same. So we're going to convert one to the other. Now, up here, this shows the relationship between common units for pressure. We have one atmosphere, which is equal to 101 kilopascals, which is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, which is equal to 760 tor. One tor is equal to one millimeter of mercury, and that's equal to, in the English system, 14.7 pounds per square inch. We won't be using this one that often because it's not really a metric unit. So I'm going to convert this millimeters of mercury, 725, into kilopascals. And I can use this relationship, this kind of conversion factor. I want the millimeters of mercury to cancel, so I put that in the bottom. I put my value for the kilopascals on top. These will cancel. I multiply 725 times 101.325 divided by 760, and I get 96.7 kilopascals. Now I have both pressures in the same unit, and I can simply use my... Boyle's Law Equation. I want to know V2 again, so I can plug in P1, which is 96.7. That's what I started with. That's when I converted. The volume is 2.8 liters. I divide by the final pressure, and I get a volume of 2.4 liters. Okay, so you can see, once again, we increased the pressure from 96.7 to 115, and therefore the volume decreases. Okay, so there you go. So there's a nice overview of Boyle's Law. And then we did six very good examples showing the relationship and how we can calculate the relationship between the pressure and the volume. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do all of the following. Please subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a nice a positive comment. Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything and share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.